word. Welcome to the B side word. We are a group of friends from around the world where we share our thoughts and opinions on interesting articles. I'm Devin, and I'm here with Emma. Hello. I'm here with CJ. Hello. And I'm here with Alexander. What's up? And to start us off, Ems. Hi, guys. Okay. So um, this isn't. This is a. It's been a good week, by the way. Hi, how are you? Yeah, yep, good. Yeah, 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 everyone's yeah, good. Yeah. Okay, straight into it. So there's a place in Japan. In Japan. <laughs> I was gonna. I was gonna say what Japan. the place is called, but then I was like, wait, but it's in Japan. It's called Nagoro, or Nagoro. Was yes. that the same? Yes. <laughs> and it is a. <laughs> <laughs> Did I say it different? I'm not sure. It's a uh, like this really tiny, sleepy riverside village, mm. and it's in one of like the little islands just off of Japan's mainland, I guess. Uh, yeah, yeah. Um, so it's in the southern Japan's remote Iya Valley. Now, yeah. this uh, isn't isn't that is that near Andale Andale? <laughs> near Nelly. Arriba, Arriba. <laughs> yeah, it's near Nelly. <laughs> What's happening now? <laughs> now. It's like, I mean, when I say it's small, it's small. And I think as of recent times, only about a few hundred people live there. I thought it was six. Oh, wait. Six people. Let's get to that. Let's get to okay. that. So this is a place that used to be, they used to have about 3,000 people or a lot of people. But it's been aging. The population has been aging because yeah. a lot of people left. Um, due to just looking, searching for Jobs. other job opportunities, or you know, it's a small village. So they Tired wanted of to the go to farming life. The, yeah, yeah, yeah. The farming life. You know, rural. So they wanted to get out of there. All the young, the young ones. Um, so a lot of them are elderly. Now, this particular village has become a little bit of a hot spot for tourists, even though it is way, 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 way off the beaten track, way off the beaten track. And the reason why is because when you're on the bus driving into this little village, Nagoro, you're like, oh, yeah, oh, yeah, I see people, I see people, oh, yeah, that person's in their garden, oh, yeah, oh, yeah, that person's uh, fixing a light bulb, when in actual fact, they're not people at all. Dun, dun, dun. They are life-size scarecrows. <laughs> look at the, look at the expression on those two. They are like so so what? <laughs> Get this. This life-size scarecrows that outnumber the humans 10 to 1. Okay? They are cotton stuffed mm. and they look like actual humans doing actual things, just mon mundane things or just regular things. And it's and it's the brainchild of a, a crafts hobbyist who goes by the name of Tsukimi Ayano. Mm. Okay. Any questions so far? Yeah, which article is this? <laughs> um, this is actually from last week. So that's why it's called Valley of the Dolls if you go to the completed ones. Valley of the Dolls. Oh, this yeah. sounds like a, like... This is like the the beginning of a horror. Movie. It is. <laughs> well, that 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 it sounds title like is. um Walking Dead. Like you know, in the Walking it Dead, like, like um deserted. It sounds like the beginning of a horror film where the where the dolls come to life at night and they haunt the residents of the village. Oh, like a Halloween. There was only one scene that I can't remember what film it is, but there's a film where they go to the town and there's like a bunch of mannequins. Um, what? No, yeah, yeah, but they've got no faces. They've got no faces. Is that the one? Yeah. Yeah. And they. Wait. Is that yeah, Doctor Who? Yeah. No, it's no, going to be Doctor Who. It's, it's the one where there's, I think, I can't, like, I'm very incomplete thought, can't remember. But I think it's something like there's the, the two brothers and one of them's like a psycho and he steals faces. Um, and the wax, something like the wax, something about wax. And he wears <laughs> little girl's faces. Remember. It's that, is it that same guy? Yeah, isn't that, isn't that Jason? The guy who Yeah, the, isn't it that same guy that, we, that, um. No. I think I know who it is. No, gonna, is it I'm the same? Is it the same character guy that's saying, um, "I'm going home," and he's right, "I'm going on a jet plane, don't know when I'll be back again." In that movie, and then he's riding on the missile, and he's a psychopath. Is it Hannibal? 
No, it's, <laughs> it's one that is definite. I think it's the House of Wax. Just, I I don't know what any of you any. Well, I don't know the movie the guys you guys are talking about, but I don't want to watch it. <laughs> It is scary as hell. And then the, he says... All, what are you describing is just a scary, scary well, movie. Uh, a, a guy is wearing I, a girl's face and then they're singing that song when there's... And then Alexander's saying he's got wax. <laughs> this is, sounds I horrible. Just, the, the House of Wax is what I'm talking about. It came out in 2005. A group of isn't friends... There a, isn't there a song saying Welcome to the House of Rack, Wax? Rax. Yeah, that's Rack Rack City. Rack yeah. City. Right, right, <laughs> um, yeah, I was gonna say, isn't there a song, The House of Wax? So this I don't is know. A group of friends stranded on the way. Armageddon. Armageddon. Oh, you were talking about Armageddon. <laughs> oh my gosh, that's not <laughs> even a. That's not even a scary movie. Wait. wait. What is? What, <laughs> what the <Wait>. hell? <laughs> what? It's the bad guy in Armageddon. Tommy Lee Jones. No. He wears a little girl's face in Armageddon. <laughs> I missed that scene. <laughs> that was, yeah, I that, Armageddon was like... That was the... A little bit emotional at the end. That was the director's <laughs> cut, Alexander. Was, uh, the son on the plane, you know? You had to get the DVD, the director's cut. It's got the part where <laughs> it's got the... Cut. No, I'm thinking of the actor who also plays... Oh, which one was it? Steve Buscemi. Steve Buscemi. Oh. Buscemi. Buscemi. He is in another film where he wears people's faces and he wears a little girl's face. But he so happened to be the one that rides on the missile in Armageddon going, leaving on a jet plane. So you've combined <laughs> two movies exactly. together. It's because I was trying to think of that guy. Oh. Oh, no, I'm in tears. And one of them was like a friendly, oh. friendly movie. <laughs> and by the sounds of the other ones, not. <laughs> <laughs> It's so, all right, so it's a house of wax. Basically, these people come, they come stranded on the way, I think, from a football game, and they found this wax museum, and they go into it, and they're sort of poking around. And in there, it's run by two brothers. and But it's not actually run. Like, I don't think it's open during the... It, they're in at night or something. And one of the brothers got a deformed face, so he tries to steal faces. Something okay. Like it's well. really weird. Anyway, but... No, I do have questions about this Japanese scarecrows. Okay, I have not finished yet, but answer your questions. Yeah, so I'll let you, I'll let, no, I'll Ask, let, I'll let you uh, go. Answer, answer your questions. <laughs> answer your questions. Because I won't have the answers. <laughs> <laughs> and this is why I was saying before. No we have need. Some good articles no, no, and no. we have some shockers. La, 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 la. So, uh, okay, I'll, I'll just go a, a little bit more. So. This that particular lady that makes them, she returned to the village in 2002 after living in Osaka for most of her life. Um, and she, when she turned back, so sorry, my numbers are wrong initially. They, when she was a little girl, there used to be 300 residents. And now there's only like 27 residents. And the youngest resident is over the age of 50. Yes, because okay. the school actually closed down. Yes. Yeah. So. Did the school close down because there was no one to go to school? No, they let the they told the kids to go to another school, like that's it. Oh, yeah. Ah, so you notice for fact, they're just making it up. Uh, that's what James May said. Oh, okay. So who's James May? The guy from Top Gear. Yeah, I was he, gonna say he Top was. Why, why are we listening to James May? Because he did a mini docu series of going through Japan, and he visited that place. That's why Dev. Uh, I don't believe James May. Uh, that's why Dev wanted why to go been... there. That's what we've been we've talking been about. Yeah. Yep. 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 <laughs> yep. 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 That's why I've been hooked with like the way that I don't know if I'm intrigued with Japan or if I'm intrigued by James May because this guy is like I see him and he's like he's monotone and he's dull, but he's the way that like just his vocabulary and the way that he describes Japan or any place is like, huh, I want to go there. I don't know if I really like the place. Oh, I need James May to be my guide. Talking about James May, did, I, I watched only a tiny bit with you and it was hilarious. It's hilarious. Because he went on the train, which is like the most luxurious train in the world. Yeah. And Oh, and it was $8,000 a night, was it? Yeah. Eight, yeah that was the one, $8,000 And they brought a him a like, meal. Is it like the first class part of Snowpiercer? Yes. Yeah. It yeah. is. It's even better. And they brought him a meal and so he's like, oh, thank you. And he, and he says what it is. Well, they tell him what it is. And then he he eats right because he's on he's filming and he and he gets his meal, and then like everything stops. Production's just like, 
James, James, you weren't supposed to eat that. And he's like, looks so flabbergasted. He's like, like, I'm not supposed to eat the food that they just bought me. And they're like, no, because there's other TV crews that need to go after you. <laughs> so they were bringing it. Just, just for so a photo he, op. Yeah, just for like a photo op. And he's eating like. <laughs> <laughs> and then they were like furious, apparently. And then he was like going through all, out all the carriages. I'm oh, sorry, I'm oh, sorry. But in their language or yeah. whatever. So funny. <laughs> that bit was so funny. Anyway, um, getting back onto Nagoro. So she. I, I, I just want to say that's a name that you do not want to mess up. Yeah, well, yeah. So she started this whole thing, um, <laughs> making scarecrows as just a functional thing. Um, and it was just to deter birds as you usually would, blah, blah, blah. Um, but then it turned into a memorial-like project, okay? So sh- her next-door neighbor passed away. And so she created a, she had been created just normal, normal scarecrows, as I said, for functionality. But she then created a, a scarecrow that looked like her next door neighbor in and, and put it in her next door neighbor's garden doing, you know, gardening or whatever so that she could talk to it every day. So it was like normal. Okay. I'm starting to think this lady's crazy. Well, it was just like a, a, ho- a homa- homage, homage to her neighbor. And then that it turned so into the fact that there were loads so elderly, every time someone would pass away or whatever, she would make a, another one. She would erect a scarecrow in their in memory. Their, yes. And then she just started making more and more for different reasons. So there's the, there's the school there and in the classroom, all the kids are scarecrows, the teachers are scarecrow. Um, you've got like all sorts of different, I mean, people driving trucks or sitting in trucks or people doing trades or fine, whatever, scarecrows. So, and she never wanted this to be like a big tourist thing, but obviously someone has seen it, gone back and been like, wow. It's odd, isn't it? Yeah. So now they get like... Especially when they come to to life at night. Like you're telling me the start of a horror film. Yeah. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, yeah I, I feel like there's gonna be ending like this crazy lady is like just killing people and blaming the scarecrow. Yeah, erects like a scarecrow. And, yeah, okay. And, and erecting them as scarecrow. Not gonna lie, I, that thought actually did pop into my head. Like, did she kill them to make so that she could make their the scarecrow? She's but just obsessed with making scarecrows. Yes. Like, yes. Well. Johnny's now got to die because mommy needs a new scarecrow. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. God. Why did you have to do that? (laughs) Hello, Johnny. But I don't know why they call it Valley of the Dolls. (laughs) I'm going to make you a cake. Hello, Johnny. No more. No more. Hello, Johnny. Forever, Johnny. (laughs) Oh, my God. Oh, so, yeah, effigies, effigies in in, in their name. There's (laughs) Johnny. Oh, my God, guys. (laughs) Someone's not sleeping tonight thinking no. about that. No. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. That's, yeah. So it takes three days to make these dolls. Um, of course, you, and you need to suffocate your victims. Oh, and the reason why it went more... The scarecrows aren't scarecrows. They're human. What do you call them? The people, what do you stuff um, when you stuff your dog? Mm, mm. When oh, he like dies? Taxonomy. The, yeah. Um, Taxidermy. The bus, ta- taxidermy. Taxidermist. Taxidermy, taxon, mm. yeah. That's the one. Um, so it, it, it takes it takes time for the um the wax to go down the person's throat to suffocate them. Oh. That's why it takes so many days. Can we stop turning this okay, into okay, a horror okay, film? Okay, yeah, yeah. So you it was a, it into a horror film. <laughs> it was a visiting German With a rocket. filmmaker, Fritz Schumann, uh, who who, who See, saw even it, the filmmakers then, they're going this can't be right. <laughs> <laughs> and then he did a short docker on it in 2014, and that's why it attracted global attention. The Stephen King, the Stephen King, have a book called Scarecrow, based on the no, Japanese Japanese village. But there's so See, you've got like construction CJ workers. CJ King might, might write one. You've got like a couple <laughs> sat, you know, watching the river, fishermen, blah 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 blah. To be honest, when I was oh, when I was watching it on the documentary, it seemed like a nice place to go. But now I'm not going. So she uses wooden slabs for the base, <laughs> cotton clumps for the going? head, you elastic can, fabric live forever. for the skin, <laughs> buttons for the eyes, wires, and around eighty rolled newspapers for the skeletons. Um, but they don't and last human forever. For the insides. Oh, God. <laughs> 
and they have an annual mm. scarecrow festival so she i'm assuming she puts many of her scarecrows into that i'm not sure but um it basically who's, who's she her most with? no one's well. putting scarecrows into it no one her most special creation is an effigy of her passed away mother who watches over her in her living room um and she speaks to her daily but she does have family they live in so she Osaka. Is crazy we're just we're just confirming this, right? Yes. I guess so. But she's happy where she yeah. is and she wants to continue making scarecrows in her village. So mm. I, I know you're really um, upset how we've, we've turned this, Emma, but I, I just need to... This, These people, <laughs> this is a town you said the youngest person is over 50. Like, what's the chances a good half of them have dementia and think these are real people? <laughs> <laughs> Oh my. This is a possibility. Oh, 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 oh. What's he doing? Gladys's husband's still alive in her mind. <laughs> oh. Look at CJ. Tell me what you think it's CJ. Jerry exploded with emotion. I'm picturing this poor old lady coming out every day with a cup of tea going, Hello, Arthur. How are you? <laughs> oh, the birds are out. And she's there having a cup of tea with this, this, this um, <laughs> dummy. <laughs> <laughs> that's a possibility because oh. I don't yeah the memory but oh yeah well would you visit this place not anymore no <laughs> <laughs> I don't even made it we, I don't even made it to a scarecrow <laughs> yeah all I'm gonna hear when I get off the bus if I ever go is go no, hello no, Johnny no 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 <laughs> hello Johnny <laughs> no buses ever exit they enter and they don't exit hello Johnny Johnny pause the podcast Okay, if you are listening on your phone, pick it up right now. Go on to your Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, get us at the B-Side Word. And did you know that we actually record these with video as well? And you can find us on YouTube, again, at the B-Side Word. And we would love it if you subscribe. A, 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 I can't even speak. A subscribe. Uh, yeah, there we go. The and remix. if you want, you can leave us some comments. We love to engage. And you know S-s-s-s-s-s-s- what? Let me ask you this. If you do follow us on any of these already, what is it you would like to see from us? Leave us some comments. Let us know. Oh, what, he said. what he said. What he said. Subscribe. I can't say the word for some reason. <laughs> Subscribe. <laughs> and pause the podcast. But anyway, talking about Japan, mm. um, this is really strange because Hold a on. lady in my... The, the, uh, the first part was not strange? <laughs> well, <laughs> yes, that was. This is no. This is the really strange no, part. This is not strange at all. Okay. But talking about Japan, yeah. A lady in my um, like I guess mother's uh, like an online Facebook group, yeah. Um, was saying that oh she was a teacher. She was saying she was doing her monthly grocery shop. That's bizarre that she shops monthly. Why? Um, that's a that's a that's pretty good. Okay. Um, <laughs> and it was about eight a.m. and there was all these students buying energy drinks at 8 a.m in the morning because yeah. she was like um she's like you guys want to know why behavior management's so, <laughs> so hard well there's like a bunch of um students buying energy drinks in the morning right this is the picture that they put up around their school to try and deter people from drinking energy drinks so this particular person this man his name's austin from sacramento california he started drinking energy drinks when he started like working long hours um, and commuting and his wife or partner Brianna got like a, a call one day saying he's he's had an accident or something like that so or something's happened come to the hospital she gets to the hospital and he's had a brain hemorrhage and he was in a coma <coughs> oh my gosh um bearing in mind she was also I can't, I can't even <clears throat> I can't even look at that she was nine right? months pregnant as well so she had a baby was in his coma anyway but um, they did a toxicology and that ruled out drugs and the doctor said he thinks it's due to excessive energy drink consumption that had caused his brain hemorrhage. Do we know how much he was drinking? It doesn't say how much he was drinking. Um, so he had to Thank have God surgery. I've energy drinks. He had to have a number of brain surgeries. He had unexpected strokes, seizures and swelling of the brain and they had to basically remove the whole front part of his skull. So if you have a look at the picture, you'll see exactly what we're talking about. But no. he has like half a head, basically. It, it looks like half his brain's missing. But This picture is actually <coughs> more freaky than the bloody Japan dolls. Yeah. So I had a look into the energy <laughs> drinks 
a little bit further. So they, we, we know that they're high in caffeine. So they have mega doses of caffeine and sometimes other stimulants. Um, a rheumatologist, Rula Haj Ali, um, says that they find that some people who use them come into the hospital with strokes and severe brain hemorrhages. Um, and they're typically young people, otherwise healthy in their 30s and 40s. She said that um, they can get a stroke after downing an energy drink due to a reversible cerebral vasoconstruction syndrome, which is or RCVS for short. It's a sudden spasm of the brain's blood vessels that is that restricts the blood supply and causes the hemorrhage blood supply. Now, she said R- RCVS is reversible. It's not a benign disease, but some people have a stroke and never recover. And in some cases, people can die. So they don't know exactly why the energy drinks trigger RCVS. Um, and they say sometimes some people have been consuming them for so long they become more sensitive to it as they as it goes on. But for other people, it could be their first energy drink and can happen. Wow. I know. And there's no other that she's like, unfortunately, there's no way to test for who will develop RCVS and who will not. And I think the symptoms are basically like the worst headache of your entire life that comes on within minutes and just um, is, like is, shaking. Does this happen to excess coffee drinkers? Is, this, is there any cases for excessive? Okay, don't take around my coffee. Maybe, <laughs> but if you consider that, doesn't one drink of energy drink have about seven ca- coffees in it? I'm not sure. I think so. I'm not sure. Hey, uh, Sage, how many? Um, house, <laughs> yeah, how many? Um, no. Energy drinks? Do you did you used to drink? One a day. Oh, one a day. Maybe two. Oh, that's not excessive. Yeah. Maybe two a day. Depends on my because I used to do that four thirty shift. Yeah, and finish at five at night. If I was doing that, I'd have two. Right. So the thing Are about we... energy drinks that I only know from when I was in the states because I don't put it on the packaging here, but in the on the can in the states, it actually tells you that the the can is two servings, not one. So you're only actually supposed to drink half a can. Right. Oh. See, I used to have like the um shots as well. See, I was yeah. This started with those, didn't it? Like that. They Jager were bombs. What energy drinks became. No, 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 no. It'll energy. be the energy a, a, energy drink shot. Right. Oh. You remember those? Yeah, like yeah. Used to, you used to pick them up at like petrol station or something. Yeah. I don't. I think I had like one ever of those because they were just terrible. Mm. But I used to drink this, them every day. This seems like not to negate the seriousness of this, but this seems like just anything. Like any, you could pick anything in the world that people consume, and some people have negative reactions to them. Mm. Mm-hmm. The only thing that's not negative is this podcast. You can consume as much of this podcast as you like, and it won't be negative. Hmm. Oh. oh, a little commercial. <laughs> So I'm on another thing that says from drinking coffee to having SEX to blowing your nose could temporarily on, raise your risk d- of d- drinking coffee to having a brain aneurysm. Well, really? Mm-hmm. To having coffee and sex give you brain aneurysm. Could do and blowing your nose can temporarily raise your how risk. How hard are people blowing their nose? Rupturing a brain aneurysm. Have you seen brain them on aneurysm. the football field, Siege? Some of them are like um, projectile, like yeah. like you don't want to stand in the way. They could kill you. Especially when they hold one and nostril and they they blow, it's like far out, mate. You left it then in the ground. And so how these are the percentages are as risk risk percentages that can contribute. There's eight factors. Coffee consumption, ten point six percent. Wait, this is the fraction of subarachnoid hemorrhages that can be attributed to a particular trigger factor. Right, coffee consumption, ten point six percent. Vigorous physical exercise, seven point nine percent. Nose blowing, 5.4%. Wow. <laughs> SEX, 4.3%. What? What are you, what? <coughs> SEX a- is a- less than blowing your nose. Yeah, straining Emma, Emma, to Emma, poo. Emma, but by the way, we are all adult here. You can actually say the word sex. <laughs> straining well, to poo. Who's listening to this podcast? <laughs> yes. Like, I'm, I, I am not sure, but like. Yeah, we're all over 18. Yep. We're okay. all over 18. Yep. I'm and and, sure I, I, and no, I like to think everyone, every, everyone here has experienced it. Mm. Well, it means everyone so needs to spell. 
So straining to poop is 3.6. Cola. Coca- 3.6 for pooping. <laughs> Coca-Cola. I don't oh. understand. I'm, I'm, my mind's blown that like blowing your nose is a five. And sh- on the on the shitter where you're on Hello, the. Hello, where's your nose compared to your. Yeah. It's like Ass. right next to your brain. Pressure, pressure in that. Yeah, it's pressure in your brain. You go, you're squinching everything up in the head. It's I'd hot say in the having asshole. a baby should be on here. Anyway, Coca-Cola, 3.5%. Being startled, 2.7%. And being angry, <laughs> so, 1.3%. So, so going to that first city in Japan and having the shit get out of you could cause a sandwich. <laughs> where, where does energy drinks fall on this scale? Then? Yeah. Hmm. Nada. I think that comes oh. into the coffee consumption because they've got such a me- massive mega doses of coffee, caffeine. Mm. <clears throat> so mm. that would be the first one, ten point six percent. I that found the funniest thing Science in this article. Daily, that, uh, by the way. Emma couldn't have said a word. Sex. <laughs> go on, go on, do it for us. No, no, you can do fine. It. Say it. Say no, it. no, I'm all good. Um, <laughs> so is it so, weird that when I saw the picture of the guy, like, I I just didn't have a reaction to it because he's not the first person I've seen with half a head. Oh, yeah, like the half a head kind of freaked me out. I was like, this is weird. I've, Why has he got half a head? So Who else? A, a slight tangent, but um, there's a guy I watch on YouTube who's a BMXer, um, and oh, I first about started him. watching him four years ago. Uh, you'll know this because we talked when, yeah, we when talked I went to him. New Zealand I just started watching oh. so he I started watching him and then within a week or two weeks of me watching him and this guy by the way was a nine times X game medalist like very very good at BMX globally known invented new tricks kind of guy so once two weeks after starting watching his channel he had an accident where his tire hit like a pothole, basically, and he just flipped over the handlebars and smacked straight into the ground. Um, and he had to have the front half of his skull removed like this. Far um, out. So since watching that channel, I've now just been watching this ex-super athlete go through from full paralysis. He's now back on his bike and riding his bike again. He's still quadriplegic, like he's still not got full motor functions and everything. But it's really impressive to watch. Scotty Cranmer YouTube channel. I recommend giving it a watch if you want some hey, 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 inspiration. Hey, hey, okay. hey, are they paying us? <laughs> no. We don't, when, 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 he, when, he, when he gives us sponsorship, then we'll advertise. If channel. I ever own a club, I'm having CJ on the door. <laughs> I'm having him on the door. Can we come in? Have you paid your cover go, uh, cover charge? No? No, then. Stay out there. I love it. He'd be so my, is, he'd definitely be my So is mate. his brain still... the? He has his whole brain. It's just the skull is removing part no, of the no, skull. No, no. There's no brain there. Like the back... It can't be. There's, it's, 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 the back half, probably. But isn't the front half is where you do most of your thinking? Frontal cortex. There was... Because I was thinking yeah. maybe his brain's still in there, but it's not propped under the thing and it's just like... I don't think you can squish a brain in. No, but well, it's not you, like they go, I can doesn't, make it fit. Your brain doesn't take up like the entire space inside your skull, does it? That's why you can get like. That's what I was thinking. Because I'm not, I'm not sure about you, but mine does. All right. Oh. I, yeah. I, I'm not sure about mine does. And your brain, I've got a big brain, brain. It needs space to be able to swell as well. Mm. My brain's okay. always swollen. I say that. <laughs> what I, this what, guy what, does look like his missing What I have thinking I do. I'm, I'm researching this. He does look like Steph Curry oh. from the side there, right? Like, I'm not the only one who thinks that. In the black and white. I didn't, nah. I didn't see it. I, I, I looked at it for a couple of seconds and I, and I had to turn away. The first time I saw someone with half a skull was when I was a kid. And I remember a news article about a guy who worked on a cargo ship. And the crane was moving something that accidentally dropped it. And it just clipped the guy and took, like, smashed his head. But not enough to kill him. Not to remove from part of the skull. In, in, in that situation, I would prefer probably to, you know. I think yeah. living. I mean, he wasn't. He's like, this guy's missing for, for an half of his skull. I think living is a, a good option. It's I'm not it. sure if I it's want to live like It's called hemispherectomy. Why? You're not going to notice. 
Yes, I am. Unless, well, when you're not looking in the mirror, <laughs> it's not like you're sat there. Like... So apparently this particular <laughs> surgery, hemispherectomy, has no apparent effect on personality or memory. First performed on a dog in 1888. Um... And then what did the dog do to deserve that? Dandy pioneered the operation at Johns Hopkins University in 1923 on a brain tumor patient. The man lived for more than three years before succumbing to cancer. But then it's they do it for some people with um, like loads of uncontrollable disorders as well, supposedly. But um, Let's see. She, this sixteen-year-old girl, was suffering loads of seizures. They stopped once she did it. Um, loads of people who suffer dozens of seizures every day, and that the medication doesn't work on. This seems to cure that. Like what the? Actual- I feel so- like this is kind of experimental, where they're just like, yeah, uh, we don't know how to solve this. This does work. It's probably not the best solution, but let's just take away part of the brain. Talking, talking about e- experimental, right? Have you ever watched Lucy, the movie Lucy? Isn't yes. that a scary with Morgan, one? Yes, with Morgan no, Freeman. Yeah, and, and um, is this Scully another and horror? No, no. And no. um, there were like when Morgan Freeman was doing his theoretical um talks about the brain and stuff, right? And then they started comparing our brain, and we use probably maximum up to ten percent, maybe. And then they were sh- talking about the dolphin, and they used twenty percent, right? But their twenty percent has evolved i don't know how much is factual because i'm just yeah seeing it in my head but they have a sonar inbuilt sonar and that's why they're like dolphins mm-hmm. that's why they can see spatial aware like uh, s- spatial awareness yeah oh, spatial awareness. and they <laughs> sorry go on um and then um so yeah they use sonars and that's 20 percent of the dolphin the dolphin use 20 percent of their brain right anyways there's this drug another made-up thing but it's a great concept so whenever like the baby gets their full about to become and get their form there's this thing that um that the wife uh the that mother produces is cp4 they i don't know if it's made up but it's cp4 and this is the chemical uh, that you, gives are you actually quoting the movie yeah the quoting the movie but i'm just okay, saying as a con- sure. just as a concept right it's just interesting as a concept to say that they took that chemical that the mum produces cp4 they s- synthetically created it mm-hmm. and then this woman accidentally took a large dose of this cp4 which allowed her to open up her brain and see a hundred percent usage of the brain which is like as a concept is is wow imagine mm-hmm. you could so Anyways. from my understanding or a couple of thoughts on this my understanding the whole 10 percent usage of the brain isn't to suggest that people only use 10 percent of the functionality of their brain but they only use 10 percent at any one time you at use 100 yeah. percent of your brain yeah oh, which you? makes me think if you used 100 percent of your brain all at once you'd probably just be having a seizure oh but having the ability to do it 100%. Without a seizure. Without a seizure. But all those, if you get like, you use your parts of your brain to do different things. So like, you'd just be doing all of those things at once. It's not like, it's not like a battery yeah. and you're saying, or a CPU and you're like, oh, we're only using 10% of the power. It's like, no, they actually just do different things. It's like trying to drive a car, watch TV and iron at the same time. Like, why would you want to do that? Because maybe, I didn't know that. maybe the perspective could be like, it could open your, like imagine, smelling everything like so like you said we only use 10 percent, right so imagine that limits the the amount of sensors that we can use at one time but imagine if we're doing something and we can use all sensors at the same time yeah. like the, it, the, the perspective would totally change like you yeah, could it, it feel be breathe a every- bad experience that's what i mean like i don't i don't oh, see a way this right. is a good thing i see it more as a bad thing oh He's thinking it would be it would be too much on your body, maybe. I mean, think about Bruce Almighty when he first gets the powers, and now we can hear everyone's like that was a terrible time for him. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, We're having to. This is a hypothetical, whereas nothing bad happens. Um, my other thing, dolphins. Unless you go to that place in Japan. This was kind of cool with the dolphins' brain thing. They can make they they when they sleep, they only sleep half of their brain at a time. Oh, 
Who's that? Oh. Dolphins. Yeah, they have to. So like half so of their brains sleep. All these sleep. They, I brought up. They have to be like still the... alert. Oh, that'd I be kind of cool. That what? thing about the ten percent, and it brought up that movie. Hey, Lucy, it's funny. It's a. It's just an interesting concept. So, uh, like, so if the, if but the that was a terrible dolphins, movie. Yeah, it was a terrible movie. But the con- like, you got to see it as the concept. Maybe the someone needs to redo amazing. it. Um, twenty percent that the dolphin use at one time, like they can use up to twenty percent at one time. The dolphin. Oh, I don't know. You said that. Yeah, was... well, that's what they said in the movies. But like, what I'm saying is, if if we're able, I don't know. I don't know if it. You're you're right. If we use a hundred percent of our brain, it might be just overwhelming at the big. I don't know. But I just, just wonder what, what where our for. brain would evolve into if we start using more at the same time. So like, my, see how my thought is the the reason that we don't do that is because there's an evolutionary advantage to not do that. Otherwise, we would have evolved to do that. Like, if you think about sense, our use of senses, like you're saying, I know the smell thing, for example, you. There's times you don't use the sensory input of smell because it's not necessary. So if you started now using smell when you didn't need to, it's probably not going to add to your experience. It's probably going to make it worse. So we're just conserving energy. Otherwise, like a mobile, if we used 100%, we'd die soon. Not, we'd need to sleep. But I wonder how much of the environment has stopped us from evolving, like to go up to that. Because we've got stuff that makes it easy for us. Yes. We're not like on constant alert. And we will take a short break from our podcast so that Alex can give us some important information. What up, what up, what up, what up? We are back on the B-Side Word and we have an announcement for you. We would just like for you to give us a bit of attention. That's right. We want you to get onto Instagram, onto Twitter, onto Facebook and follow us at the B-Side Word. And if you're feeling really, really good, you can leave us a comment, even a like, maybe subscribe to the channel or even rate us, review us on your favorite podcast listening app. Anyway, back to the episode. Dev? And back to the podcast. Hamza. Hamza Ben Dalaj. Has anyone heard of him? <laughs> Are you saying it right? It could be a couple of reasons why I haven't heard of him. One simple thing is I haven't heard of him, or you've just butchered the name. Yeah, is his name Harold? <laughs> no, definitely <laughs> Hamza. <laughs> Hamza Ben Dalaj. So, 27 year old Algerian. He's a computer science grad. Uh, um, I've heard of this guy. And. Uh, you put the article in, I did. but it's not a. It's actually four years old. It's four years old. But anyway, um, uh, well, hold on, hold on. You put this article in four years ago, and we just got to it. <laughs> <laughs> We've got a backlog. <laughs> 2015. This one. Oh, 2015. So, um, he, when this article was That's released, really Newsweek, he was being sentenced in the U.S. court yeah. for using a computer to steal money from American banks and financial institutions. Um, well, from more than 200 American banks and yeah. financial institutions. Now, he was a, it was a big deal because... Can I ask, yes. does anyone have a problem from people stealing money from banks? He probably had to pay his health care. He lives in America. No, but um, do you care if you people steal from the banks? It, it depends how what the consequences. Like, if the banks then make that impact the holders of the accounts, then yeah, that's a pretty bad thing. Mm, mm. But how if it wasn't on any accounts, it was just from their profits. But that's what I mean, are they like, are, <laughs> are, the, bank, are the bank then just gonna go, well, you've taken that out of our keys, we're gonna take it out of all these other people's key. We're keeping up. Oh, they can't. Yeah, but Can what about Million Dollar oh, Dan? He stole, and, like, we don't uh, care about that, did we? No, we didn't. No. Nah. No. Nah. So I feel like we no, don't I, care. I, I yeah. cared in the way where I, was, I cared in the fact it didn't happen to me. Yeah. As long, or, or other people's actual bank accounts. Like if it's other people's personal bank accounts, that's a big deal. Yeah. yeah but yeah. if it's not, yeah. then yeah. Yeah. If um, I've only got 500 bucks and then you take 495 out, <laughs> come on, man. There's other people who've got millions of dollars. You're taking the, the scraps. <laughs> So it was yeah, um, like, like, like that, that would upset me. Mm. They were like, like just from the insurance money, fuck them. Yeah. <laughs> huh? Oh, so okay. there was a big thing because they were like, is he a big, um, just a thief or is he a Robin Hood? Robin Hood was a thief? 
Yes, yeah, but and, a good Robin Hood gave it to the poor. Right? He was a good thief. <laughs> and this this was because I, I'm not sure you can be a good thief. <laughs> no, you can. You're either a you thief can. or you're not. No, I think you can. And I I, I think and so well the same as Robin Hood. If someone steals something, what what could make him a good thief? What could make him a bad thief? Because he's he's not keeping the money for himself. It's for a reason that he's giving it to to anyway. So this guy. Okay, so if he steals something. So he can purchase drugs with it, that's right? He's not keeping it for himself, the money. That's a bad thing. He's no, giving the money bad. to a drug dealer. That's a bad thing, that's CJ. Bad. That is such a bad example. Bad example. Drug dealer I know. Has children. I'm just trying to... F- they have mouths to feed. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. And he's in America, so he has that insurance to pay for, yeah. the health insurance. Yeah. We all know that's a rip off. Yeah. Well, no. So this guy wasn't an American. He was Algerian, but... Wait, can I just add another point to yes. that? You know how much it costs in America to have a baby? Yeah, it's insane. One trillion dollars. Ten thousand dollars. Minimum. Cheaper to buy, cheaper to buy condoms. There was an Aussie bloke going. It costs you ten thousand. P- have a child in Australia. They give you ten thousand dollars to have a kid. Yeah, they give you As money to actually just go to the hospital and have a baby. Yeah. It costs less than that if you're going private here. Yes, <laughs> it costs. <laughs> you get your own obstetrician for less. Wow. That's wild. You could actually have the um, artificial insemination will probably cost you 10,000 bucks. Or probably yeah, more. Yeah, it's about 7,000 a yeah. cycle, I think. Yeah. Depending. Yeah. Yeah. Actually more. Yeah. Um, but. Um, Back to Algeria. Yes. <sighs> so, he was <laughs> Poor Emma. <laughs> She's no, trying to get onto this topic and we've just smashed Shut it. Shut up. We've not letting her finish. <laughs> so, he was stealing from the banks and financial institutions. But reportedly, he he gave millions of dollars to Palestinian charities. So, he was stealing and giving to charities. Yeah. Anyway, so that's why yeah. he was like, is he the Robin Hood? Um, okay. So... Uh, a good thief, in your opinion, if I robbed a hundred million dollars from the bank yeah. and I gave twenty million to the cancer council, mm. I gave twenty million to the homeless mm. and twenty million to somewhere else, like children's hospital, yeah. and kept forty for myself, no, am I a good bad thief? thief? Bad thief. Mm. Bad thief. I've done some good things. Yeah. Nah, bad thief. If you did like get twenty for yourself and split the other twenty, I'd be like, that's all right. I've, I've not read this entire thing, but I've just read a paragraph that suggests that they were taking money off people's accounts, by the way. So. Oh, okay. oh <laughs> bad thief. Mm, bad thief. Bad thief. So he is basically was the co-creator of a banking Trojan horse called Spy Eye. Um, and that was in With his little eye? In uh, 2011. <laughs> yeah. But it was a malware toolkit. Um and it was, I guess, re- highly popular in 2009 and 2011 um, and is believed to have infected more than 1.4 million computers in the US and elsewhere. Um, he, I think that how he got caught is he was going to sell a copy of it to for $8,500 to an undercover officer. So that's how okay. he got caught. Just for curiosity, if you have the software to make an immense amount of money... Why would you be trying to sell I know, $8, right? I know. Why $8,500? I don't know. He is an idiot and deserves to be caught. <laughs> he didn't say sell the whole thing, just a copy of it. But um, I don't care. He's an idiot. He, should have been, he deserved to be caught. He did. Oh. Well, he, he was caught and he pleaded guilty. And I think he was facing up to 65 years in prison and up to 14 million in fines. Do you think that 65 years is a little, a little bit steep? He hasn't murdered anyone. He's not raped anyone. He stole money from banks. Oh, and okay. Um, yes, it's a bit steep, but they're probably trying to send a message to people. Do not do this. And you're in a country where Algeria, I'm not sure what the punishment is for the other crimes, but for that financial one, they're probably saying, hold on, if he can do it, someone else can. No, but he was being let's prosecuted sure, in the US. Let's make sure it's never done again. Yeah, it's kind of one of those like, the justice system isn't based on what the crime is. It's based on who you commit it against. Yes. Yeah. Yes, 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 yes. So they're, they're, they're going to set an example with him to make sure no one takes their money again. Mm. Well, the, he, the reason that he became sort of 
globally known as well. Um, it took two years for him to be caught, by the way. But um, when he was arrested in Thailand and he was snapped by the paps, he were, he had this massive grin on his face. Like, not grin like, <laughs> but like, he was just, he was like... <laughs> Okay. He was happy, uh, and he was dubbed the happy hacker. I don't from know then. why I got that um that that cartoon character. <laughs> hmm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, no, not that one. So yeah, he's dubbed the happy happy hacker. If you Is Google he, happy uh, hacker, I I read an article saying that he was um that he was uh he got shot like he was killed. I don't know. Well, I'm just reading. I, I, I'm reading the most credible place in the world, Wikipedia, and it says yeah. that he he's been in prison, which suggests that he's still in prison, not dead. Mm. Um, and he was yeah. only sentenced to 15 years, not 65 years. That's good then. Well, a lot of people <laughs> no, because this was saying he he they were he he was possibly facing up to 65, right, years, okay. so he must have got 15. But there was a lot of people like uh, Free Hamza because he was well loved back in his home country whatever because he was giving it to charities so he was like a hero in their mm. eyes and they were like what the heck but um yeah interesting and i'm surprised that's all he got and if you google happy hacker you'll see his face and he looks very happy with himself <laughs> um like actually literally happy as all in actual one of these photos he's like so it's like he's almost proud like but not in a arrogant way not in an arrogant way just Humble. like really humbly proud like i did it i right. did it like that type of feeling no if he did it he would have done it and not got caught but he looks elated <laughs> to get caught just i don't know i don't know if to get caught but because of what he'd done i don't know i, f I don't think he's that bright no For a I guy think he's who bright. could hack in that could hack into that kind of stuff right what? To be happy to get caught is completely stupid. I don't is think that... he's happy that he got caught. I think he's happy no. with the impact <laughs> that he had. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, yay, they got me. Woohoo! Ooh, ooh. Ooh, ooh. <laughs> what I love what I love the most is the stubbornness of CJ. I said the same thing like... and then he <laughs> He just ignored everything that everyone said. And he said, yeah, he stood no. there and he was happy he got caught. <laughs> <laughs> nah, I don't care. <laughs> it's like, it's like he was in, uh, he was in the court, right? And the other person goes, object. Anyway, before I was interrupted. <laughs> <laughs> Your honor. <laughs> Before this douchebag, you know, <laughs> cut my flow. <laughs> oh, the best. Oh, it's the best. Oh. So, yeah, I mean. Hamza, yes, yes, good or bad? I. I. It sounds weird, but I don't really have a massive problem with it. Mm. Maybe because it's a non-violent crime and it's like against an institution rather than... No, no, but Alexander said he robbed people, didn't he? Well, yeah, well I, I, I don't... Everybody I back don't. through insurance. It's good, yeah. Mm. But look, we had some good conversations today. Yeah. And next week is our big one zero zero. One hundred. Triple digits. Yeah. 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 So that's that's going to be a big one. I wonder if we should do a, a, like change the format for that particular one, or keep the same, or do some games. Maybe we could do some games. Game to celebrate. Games. Yeah. Are you going to make another yeah. cake? Oh. We'll just buy one. No Maybe need to we'll buy one. You haven't got time to make one. Okay. But you got to decorate. Oh. At least write. You got to write like at least something on them. A hundred. Did I do that for our fiftieth? What did I do that for? Yeah, for fifty. Uh, yeah. Was it for fifty? I can't believe it's been fifty. Another fifty. I can't. Oh, God. Because in actual fact, we've done more because they've not all been released. I can't believe it's not butter. Yeah, it's Flora. I do believe it's not butter. I oh, know it's utterly butterly. No, Flora. Who says that? Which one? I, I can't tell. believe it's not butter. Yeah, but yeah, but what's the? Is that the name? Of it? That was the name of it. Yeah. Well. Thank you to everybody. Appreciate you. Appreciate you. Appreciate you. And uh, we'll I, be see back. You. I see you. I see you. I see you. We'll be back with another episode Intensive of TPSW care, you know? next 
And I see really? TBS. Wait, Next so week. hold on. Emma's talking about not switching things up to 100. Now we've got Emma signing us off. TBSW. What, what's going TBSW. on? TBSW. TBSW. Hashtag TBSW. What's TBSW? The B side word. <laughs> Are you serious? <laughs> As a famous uh, person once said, ja- John Macaro. You cannot be serious. Oh, okay. Yes, I can be. <laughs>